Immediately after he did that, this beam of light came out of the bottom of this thing and it came right for our canoe. They had larger eyes than ours, smaller nose, a smaller mouth, no protruding part of the ear and no hair. Don't look back, don't look, don't look. And it was tall, about seven, eight foot tall, and black, real hairy, like a gorilla. And uh, the one that came out of the woods joined the circle and they were all like, dancing around. And there were these beings, they were human shape, but they weren't human. There always is the mystery. Uh -uh. The thing we don't know, as Van der Leeuw put it, the mystery of life is not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. We have an amazing show lined up for you today as we dive into a number of topics including a cryptid encounter, a run in with a 12 foot tall demon and an alien abduction to top it all off. Trust me when I say you do not want to miss this one. I am your host Sean Phillips and you're listening to Firelight Vibes. Once again everyone, welcome back to the show. Now today I'm going to be speaking with Jim and Jim has had a lifetime of incredibly unique encounters. As a young boy he had a terrifying run in with a cryptid which is unlike anything I've ever heard before. And this experience appears to have been a catalyst for a number of subsequent experiences, including being chased down the road by a 12 foot tall entity and even a couple of alien abduction encounters. I was not lying when I said, you do not want to miss this one. But before we get into the show, I just want to take a minute to remind you that we now have a YouTube channel up where we take a deep dive into lesser known cases of the weird and unexplained. So if that sounds good to you, please stop by and leave a like and maybe even subscribe. Just don't make fun of my face. I'm just joking. You can make fun of my face. Also, if you want to be on the show, shoot me an email at firelightvibes at gmail.com. Uh, just leave me a brief description of your experiences and I will be sure to get back to you. Okay, I think that's all I had to say. So if you're ready, let's get comfortable. Let's grab a snack and let's get in the glow. Hey, Jim, welcome to the show. Howdy, howdy. How's it going? Pretty good. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. You're just, uh, you know, excited to be on the show and, and uh, share my experiences. Yeah, well, I'm excited to have you. You actually, you sent me an email briefly describing your encounters. And when I got it, I was really excited to speak with you because it sounded like you had numerous encounters with the supernatural. I think your first you mentioned was maybe a cryptid encounter and then right. something a little bit more paranormal on down the line. Is yeah. that correct? Okay. Yeah. And it sounds like also these kind of, I know that you've moved around a lot. So these also kind of followed you from location to location. So it doesn't sound like this was like stuck with a particular location. Like a lot of times people will basically, they'll have a lot of experiences, but it's in the same location. And they'll like attribute that to either like, I don't know, you know, the Indian burial ground being nearby or something like that. You always hear that kind of stuff. But in your case, it sounds like they're following you. Uh, it seems that way. Yeah. Um, like I, like I had spoken with you on the emails earlier. Um, yeah, it's been kind of following me around, uh, you know, everywhere I've lived, uh, around the world. So it's been kind of, uh, an exciting life, but also, you know, crazy <laughs> and, and at times terrifying. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I do appreciate you, uh, coming on the show and sharing this, but, uh, if you will, if you don't mind, just take us back to your first experience, kind of tell us what you were doing that day and kind of just lead us into it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll lead into it um, first by saying uh, this is around when I was like 11 years old. Um, I was visiting family in Puerto Rico. And before this event, uh, I had been, you know, had friends and stuff that would bring up stuff about paranormal stuff like that. And I was always very skeptical, even as a child. Um, so up until this, uh, this experience, I didn't believe in anything. Uh, I always thought it was just kind of like, you know, weird and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but like I, w like I said, I was 11 years old. I was visiting my family in Puerto Rico. Um, and we just had a normal day, uh, you know, playing around as kids, stuff like that. And then uh, we were settling down for the night pretty late, especially for like an 11 year old. Um, and uh, I was with my, my two cousins and my sister as well. They did not experience uh, any of this. But, okay. Um, so we had settled down for the night. It was like around 1130 midnight. Uh, and we were watching uh, Hercules, the, the Disney, Disney Hercules movie. Um, and when the movie had finished, uh, 
So his house had a, a regular door and then like a screen porch door that we left open for uh, the airflow uh, as we didn't have AC uh, at that house back then. Um, and when the movie ended, he said, you know, hey, uh, can you go close that screen door, please? And I was like, I don't really want to do that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know why. I just normally I would have. Um, and I think it's because I maybe I knew something was going to occur subconsciously. I, I really don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got into like a, a small, you know, kids argument about who was going to do the door. And then we ended up uh, playing rock, paper, scissors to see who, who did it. And I, I lost. So I went and uh, went, to, went to close the door. And then when I went to close the door, uh, I, I just happened to look straight outside and they have this big porch, um, maybe foot and a half, two feet off the ground. And it's maybe four or five feet wide. Um, just as a frame of reference for how far I am from this, uh, this creature that I'm about to, to talk about. And from the end, end of the porch, another two, three feet in front is this big gangly, green creature uh and and i call it the chupacabra like that's what i've I've been calling it you know since i've seen it uh and it's on all fours kind of seated like a dog would be uh and it's we're practically eye to eye even though it's two feet lower than i am and you know seven to ten Oh, maybe 15 feet away from me. Okay. And it's just looking at me. And it's got this big bulbous, like gray alien type head with these incredibly huge amber eyes. Um, they didn't really glow, but they have like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but you could see like light was going through it. Like it wasn't glowing, but you could see that it was like, Almost as if you could see through the yeah translucent. Almost as if you could see through the eyes. Okay. Uh, wow. And it had a, a very small mouth with two canines that you could two very large like I would say maybe three three four inch long canines coming out of of the small mouth, and uh, it had it was green color like a, like a uh, olive drab kind of green at least from you know it was midnight with no lights out. So as much as I could kind of see Mm -hmm. and it had hair, like very short hair on its body that came to kind of like a crest up at the top. Um, and if you were, if you have any knowledge about the Chupacabra back in, in the nineties and the early two thousands being reported in Puerto Rico, people talked about it having like spikes on its head that it, it was hair. It was just very thick, air that came it matted like but it came to like a crest so it it looked like it could have been spikes but it was definitely hair and all this was within uh, a minute or two that i stood there and i couldn't even move like for that minute or two i was paralyzed man it was and and do you think that your your paralysis was due just to your fear of the thing or do you think there was something else going on there I think it was just, it was a combination of fear and also the fact that um, everything I knew had just changed. Right. And so it was just like a moment of like, the thing I'm looking at is not supposed to be real. I'm not supposed to be staring at this creature that I think could have easily been uh, seven or eight feet tall if it stood up because it was eye level with me and it was, you know, at right. the time I was four foot five or something like that between four foot and four foot nine. Cause I was four foot nine until I was, uh, older. So I, I had a late growth spurt. Um, mm-hmm. so I, I do, I remember my height pretty well cause I used to get, you know, teased for it. But, uh, yeah, it was just eye level with me and it didn't do anything, didn't move or anything like that. And then ab- about, a minute or so in, which it felt like longer. Like it felt like a very long amount of time, but it was very, I know it was very short because like it just was. Um, and so I slammed the door and I, I yell 
for my cousin. I said, Hey, you gotta, you gotta come see this thing. Like I was freaking out. Like, I'm like, look, dude, you have to come see this thing. I, I, I saw this alien or chupacabra or something. You know, he starts laughing at me. He's like, Oh, you're just seeing things, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, dude, you have to come see it. And he's like, Oh, well then open the door. I was like, I'm not opening that door. And then you can hear the, the gravel outside, like shifting as if it was moving. And then you just hear the bushes, like just go crazy. And then, uh, he opened the door and nothing was there. And so obviously it had booked it into the bushes or, or left um, from all the commotion. And he, you know, he told me, Oh, you know, it was probably, you know, one of the, a stray dog or something. And I was like, dude, there's no way. <laughs> there's no right. way. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been now 20 years and, and I can I still remember like it was yesterday, man. It was, it definitely is the, the fir- my first experience and it definitely was I guess you could call it like a like a class A since it's like a sighting I guess yeah um yeah it was definitely it rocked my world man and it's uh definitely the beginning of a lot of a lot more strangeness that would happen later down the line that we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about right yeah yeah and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to that with this one though it sounds like I mean that was a lot to process for you. You're a young kid. You're, you said yourself you were a little bit skeptical at the time. So coming face to face with this thing had to be, I, I can understand why you would be paralyzed with all of that, what, what's going through your mind at the time. Now, you said that it was sitting like a dog. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, it was uh, like sitting more up. More like, like a, like, yeah, like sitting up, like it's, you know, back straight, you mm-hmm. know, legs kind of cocked to the side, like like you would imagine, like, uh, if you were to Google sitting dog picture or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and it was eye level you, with you uh, sitting like that. I mean, this thing had to be huge, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why I was saying like probably seven, eight feet tall at the least. And it, it was wow. very gangly. So very long, like limbed um, and skinny, skinny torso. And did you, did you happen to get a glance at the hands or the feet or anything like that? Did it, did it seem more canine? So, they were, it had long fingers. Uh, I didn't see any claws on the front feet mm-hmm. or I guess hands or, or whatever you want to call it, but they were very long fingers and it was four of them. It only had four. I, I remember that. Wow. The back ones were a little more obscured because of the way the gravel was sitting and stuff like that and the, and the mm-hmm. dirt and stuff outside. Uh, it, was, it was a very like... Um, rural area that, uh, that my cousin lived in uh it's been paved since but before it was just like gravel and dirt roads so i couldn't really see the back feet but the front feet or arms or whatever you want to call them four fingers very long um so like that something about hearing that it had fingers is just terrifying <laughs> i wasn't expecting that honestly um so it had long four long fingers what, what would you say like four or five inches long or like creepy long like crazy long uh, not crazy long yeah probably okay. like four or five inches just uh, long enough to not look normal gotcha and and did you get any sense of it do you do you think that it was bipedal or do you think that it ran around on four legs most of the time i know i know this is a lot to try to remember back to but um i'm just trying to get a sense of this thing i don't know um like I've I've heard other reports of people talking about this thing uh, or similar things. That's why I call it chupacabra because it had that the green color and and some of the other stuff you you typically hear from those reports. And other people have said it was uh, you know standing on two feet. So right. It might have had the ability, but all I know is it was just sitting like a dog, like just like my dog would be, be sitting if he's mm-hmm. uh, looking for a treat or something, which sa- now sounds kind of creepy. Thinking about this creature <laughs> looking at me. Right. Yeah. It, I mean, it does sound a lot like the older description of the chupacabra, especially with the, uh, the three to four inch canines that you were describing sticking out of its mouth. Yeah. I remember seeing that in the early depictions of it. And, uh, I think also the little crest on the head too. Uh, I remember seeing something about that, I believe too. But, uh, so it definitely sounds like whatever you were seeing, it seems like that creature was attributed to the chupacabra at the time. 
I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Because it's that's the only thing that really came to mind, other than like I was talking when I was talking to my cousin. Like I said, like hey, mm-hmm. alien or because just because of the the head, you know, had that classic. Because even as a skeptic, you you know that you know the classic alien head. Yeah. So so the head that that is interesting. The big bulbous head. Did you did you see any ears on it, or was it more like the gray alien head where it had the small nose and the small mouth? I know you said it had large eyes that were, you said they were green, right? No, they were amber colored. Um, oh, amber, amber. Okay. Yeah, they were, the, the creature was green, but the gotcha. color of the eyes was amber. So you can, like I said, they didn't emit any light, but you could just tell that, uh, you know, it was looking at you and it, it was translucent. Mm-hmm. It was a weird, very weird looking, and they took up like 50% of its face. Like most of its face was the eyes. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that that is crazy. So, did you when you were staring at this thing, did you get a sense of intelligence from it or did it seem more animalistic to you? Back then, um the only thing running through my head was just fear and then like like I said, like everything that I know is a lie. Uh so I didn't really really pick up any form of intelligence or any any other signs of anything? I didn't feel any uh, any dread, like I, other than like mm-hmm. the fear that I had of just looking at this thing. I didn't feel like it was emitting any kind of feelings or I, none of the the kind of things that some people attribute to other other cryptids or no, no mind right. speak, none of that kind of stuff either. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, it is interesting though that you brought up that you were nervous about going and opening the door, as if you somehow had an inkling of what might happen. It seems like there was something in the air, maybe something that you picked up on that the others didn't that uh, had shifted in the air or something like that. I don't know. Maybe you're a little bit more sensitive than they are. But uh, it seems like you somehow knew that something was there. Yeah, like I said, I typically would have just been like, okay, yeah, I'll close the door. Right. Um, but yeah, so I guess it must have been emitting some kind of something. Cause like I said, I, I typically wouldn't, you know, I'm very like agreeable. Like, you know, mm-hmm. usually I would just close the door, but that time I was like, I don't want to do it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> paper, like scissors. it must've been doing something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I can, I, I, I've had that feeling a lot when I was a kid too. So I can, I can, uh, I can understand that feeling. Um, I do want to ask you a few more things about this before we move on. Gotcha. So did, did you get a sense of, uh, I, I just now kind of touched on it, but the, the alien head, um, you didn't see any dog ears or anything like that on it. It was just the bulbous head. Is that correct? Yeah, no, no ears because um, where, it, like I said, it had very thin hair through, like covered in very mm-hmm. thin hair, and then it got really, really thick and matted up towards the top. And it, where it would have had ears, was already covered in okay. in the hair. So if it did have ears, I didn't see any. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I was picturing that a little bit wrong. I was picturing it more of the gray alien, the skin with a uh, thin hair. So you're saying it had thick hair going all up the side and then kind of coming together into a crest on the top. It, it was mostly, it didn't, it didn't really start getting thick up until about halfway up its head. That's like, it was mostly just thin hair. So you could see the skin up until it got about halfway up its head. It was just very thin thick hair like matted and and like going down its back like it like crested up kind of it was wow um yeah so you did see the skin like it had like that like i don't know like this green skin. and and it wasn't glowing at all the body wasn't glowing you just could tell that it was a green color yeah because you can you can still kind of see uh because there's no like tall trees or anything in, in my cousin's neighborhood or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can see by like intense starlight, you can, there's enough starlight and moonlight that you could see, you know, colors outside. Like it, it was, it was very rural. Now they have street lights and stuff. So um, I probably would have been able to see it a little better, but you could still see details and stuff like that because of the nature of where, uh, where they live. Right. Gotcha. And, since then, I know that you've done a lot of research looking into this, as one would after seeing something like this. Um, what what do you think it was now? 
I still think the same. Now, whether what the nature of the creature is, I don't know. I think it might be that it is a form of extraterrestrial mm-hmm. because um, the, it's it's been seen in Puerto Rico a few times, but it was only really seen a lot between um, like a little bit in the seventies and then around the, uh, the nineties and early two thousands. And then it kind of has kind of the reports have been very scant if, if any, and then it's moved kind of towards like the, the new uh, quote unquote Mexican Chupacabra, which is the, the, the dog with mange type of look that most people attribute to the, the new age ones. So I think it's a, it's a, I, I believe it's a form of extraterrestrial. I, because it just had that that head, and like, and I, now I think that there's no coincidence that everybody says that it looks a certain way. It's not because they were told it looks that way. It's because it does. Right, right, yeah. So you don't think that this was some kind of a screen memory or anything? You think that's exactly what that thing looked like? In other words, you don't think it was a gray alien standing there and then trying to its best to convince you that it is the fabled chupacabra or something like that to kind of hide its agenda. You think it really did just, that was its appearance. So I've never given that really a uh, thought. I've heard of that kind of stuff um, in the past where uh, like things will put up an appearance or, you know, people will say, you know, or it, and you could tell it shifted or something mm-hmm. like that. Or, But I feel like, this was its real appearance. I mean, I can't tell you if it was, but I didn't get any inkling that it was trying to hide from me because it was just sitting there um, at the door like, or, you know, within like at the door facing in the direction that we were. And I think, I don't know if it was sitting there trying to see, you know, what it's going to do mm-hmm. because the only reason I could I could see in my mind why it would be staring at the door is because it heard us and was like, "What's going on over there?" Right. Do you do you think that you startled it <laughs> opening the door on it like that, or do you think it it meant to be there waiting for you when you open the door? Sorry, this is just all um, me asking you to speculate on the experience. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No worries. But the door was already open, but the it was the screen door. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Closed to to allow the to allow the airflow. So. I think when I slammed the door, it might have startled it. And that's when it like, because the conversation with my, myself and my cousin happened like instantaneously with me slamming the door. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, you know, when I slammed it shut, uh, it got startled or it's like, okay, let me get out of here. Um, and that's when all the shuffling and the, the bushes and the gravel and all that started happening. Um, so I, I believe I startled it then, but, uh, I, I really think it was just, if anything, just curious as to what is over there because, you know, it's really late at night and it's hearing stuff. And it, I guess for the most part, doesn't hear stuff late at night. Right. So it just was there checking you out, basically. And it is interesting, though, that your cousin also heard it scampering away, basically. So there is that shared experience aspect of it, you know, that at least, yeah, <laughs> yeah at least he can confirm that there was something out there. So you don't, I mean, that's something, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. He 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 definitely has confirmed that yeah, there was something out there. Um and since he's been a little more uh open to my experience because like I said I've talked about this for it's been like 20 plus years now. Um and so he's like, "Okay, you know, something happened and he 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 saw what he said he saw, but he just didn't he hasn't had an experience yet." And I hope he doesn't because it was it's just paradigm shifting kind of thing yeah yeah absolutely it's uh you can't go back after experiencing something like that but oh, no. and, and i know that after that you probably i i'm sure as you got older thinking back on it that's when you start looking into like researching what is this and what was really happening and i know that you said that this was your first experience correct <laughs> correct so do you think that having this encounter kind of opened you up to more experiences do you think there was any kind of link between this and what you went on to experience later in life? I do think that sometimes, um, like to some extent, it might have uh, 
opened me up or I don't know if, like I said earlier, and you brought up that I, I felt that there was some reason I didn't want to open that door or, or right. close it. Um, and so maybe I'm just sensitive to this or I'm meant to see some of this stuff. And this was just the first one. So I, I kind of flip flop between it. Cause I just, it's hard to put things into perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's, it's a, it's a doozy of a first experience, something physical st sitting in front of you like that, something that looks so alien as well. Yeah. I, I can't imagine trying to process that as a kid, but I guess, yeah, if you will, I, I assume that the best way to do this is maybe to just go in chronological order. Is that correct? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you will just kind of lead us into your next experience and if we need to, we can always tie it back to this again. So. Uh, yeah, sure. So the next one, um, the next experience wouldn't be, or the next, uh, like big experience. Cause I I've seen, orbs and stuff that we can talk about uh further you know in in the interim time mm -hmm. but the next big like visceral experience uh is when i was 18 19 years old uh at this point i was living in indiana um and i was hanging out with my buddies uh you know i spent the day like you know the day before i was playing like Call of Duty or something until super late. And so I slept the entire day and I got up very, very late, maybe like six or seven o'clock at night. And then uh, me and my buddies went out and got some pizza and stuff. And then we just kind of sat in front of his uh, grandparents' house. It was me. Uh, we'll call him D and we'll call the other other guy uh, uh, T. Um, and those are their, their initials. Um, and so we were just, you know, chilling in, in front of his grandparents' house, uh, in front of Dee's grandparents' house, and sitting on the tailgate of his grandfather's uh, truck. And just kind of, you know, sitting there, you know, talking to each other, joking around, you know, coming up <laughs> with plans for, for stuff to do the next weekend and, you know, stuff that you do as, as a, you know, nearly 20-year-old. Yeah, sounds like a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it it was it was it was a it was a good time, and uh, we were out there for quite a while, man. From sitting on that truck for hours, man. From maybe like ten thirty all the way up until around almost three in the morning is when this experience happened. Okay. Um. So we're sitting there talking, you know, um, just having a blast, and then. All of a sudden, we start hearing the bushes in the house in front of us. Uh, so there's like a like a regular size like neighborhood road, and then the, the house. There's another house in front of his grandfather's house. Um, and so and we we would play basketball there and set up. It's enough room to play like a like a half court uh, basketball game. Is is how big the uh, the road is for two cars to kind of go by and have cars parked on the side, like, like a regular neighborhood. And I, I hear the, the bushes in the house across the street, which is another friend of ours house. Um, you know, we we hear the bushes kind of like shaking and we're like, Oh, you know, whatever. It's probably just a, a squirrel or some, you know, it's some small animal just kind of, you know, got startled and, and moved around or something. Um, and so we just keep talking and then another 10, 15 minutes goes by. And from the opposite side of where the bushes are on the house, if, if you're looking at the house, the bushes are on the left and the other side is completely empty. And there's a ton of space in between that and the next house. All of a sudden we hear the gutter for the house kind of like, like some, like something had sat on it or grabbed it. And then around the corner, comes this shadow being uh and it's kind of the way it's walking is weird because it's holding on to the the gutter of the house and kind of uh has its knees like about halfway bent and walking that way um and then at that point me and my friends are like what is that and um it was this it looked almost solid, but the it's as if you you drew the silhouette of a person on like Photoshop or something, and then applied a Gaussian blur at the very edges. Um, and it was kind of coming off a little bit at the ends, like 
like smoke, which is something I noticed when it got closer, but not when we first saw it. But shortly after asking, you know, what is that? Um, pretty soon I realized I'm the only one still standing there. <laughs> uh, so my, my buddy T he books it, you know, first. And then uh, my buddy D is like, I don't know. And then he, you know, jumps off the tailgate and runs into the house. And I'm just sitting there like, what's going on? And in the time it takes me to look left and right, it's in the middle of the street. And it has to be 11, 12 feet tall. Wow. Um, and, at, and at that point is when I notice it's kind of like the blurriness is kind of trailing off of it, like, like smoke, but not like a dense, thick smoke. Um, and at that point, it's when I decided, hey, it's now or never. And so I book it down the road towards my house. Um, and I'm booking it and like running as fast as I can. And it's a long, it's a long way. Cause my friend lived towards the end of the, the road and I lived all the way at the end, at the other end and I'm booking it. And this thing is walking and almost keeping pace with me, like within a couple feet. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was wild. And then I get to my house and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the keys where they're normally hidden um, and they, they used to be hidden up near the, we, I, we since moved from this house uh, a while ago, but they used to be hidden up in this corner and they weren't there. And so I'm just like banging on the door and I'm like, this is it. And I look back and it's just standing in my driveway, not moving anymore. And my, and my mom comes out and she's like, you know, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm like, get me in the house, get me in the house. And she's, you know, she's mad because it's three in the morning or three thirty in the morning and, and I'm waking her up, you know, banging on the door. Uh, and I'm like, there's something chasing me. There's something chasing me. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I told her and she's just like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I, I, I look out the window of the door because the, the door frame has a window um, and, I, and I'm six feet tall and, you know, she's a lot shorter than I am. so She can't see, but mm -hmm. I go to look out just to see if it's still there. And you could see it just took, it went up into the sky in a, in a puff of smoke. Like that's, as, that's how I can describe it as if like, you know, if you're watching like a kind of a smoke, but in reverse, like it looked very weird, but it just went up and, and gone. So it was like the sky was sucking up the smoke in a way, like a vacuum almost. Yeah, kind of, kind of like that. Yeah, like that's how it left. Wow. Yeah, and this was the thing about this experience is that this was over. This was the first time with this uh, entity, and it took place within a span of like I'd say four to five months, where it continued to pursue me. Um, and I guess we'll get to the next part of of when it was. I would say maybe like a month down the line from this. Uh, my dog starts barking. Like, well, I had two dogs at the time, um, and I still do now, but there are two, two other dogs because it's, it's been quite a while, and the, these two, you know, uh, are no longer with us. But uh, they start barking at the backyard, and we have this big glass uh, sliding door for the backyard. And I'm like, you know, what's going on? What's, like, why are they barking? And then I, I pull the curtains back, and it's standing in the backyard. And then maybe for, I would say 15 seconds. And then it just drifts back off into the, into the sky. Did it do it the same way as before with the smoke and everything? Same way. But I, this time I saw the entire thing. So it, from the top to the bottom, as if it were kind of like, like the head, you know, first, was gone then the rest of it and then finally the legs like went up into into the thing so like a very weird looking um smoke thing but you could see it like g being sucked up but like almost like its body was being sucked up in sections or something like that like it was just very weird mm -hmm. 
Okay, so and it was it only these two times that you saw it, or was there more than that? Even? No, no, so there were two more times. Um, another time was about two, two and a half months after it was in my backyard. Um, I was coming home from a friend's house. Uh, they had a small like barbecue get together. Um, and this was about, I would say 11 or 12. And they live like know, two and a half miles from where I live. Cause I lived in this huge neighborhood. Like it was like a conglomerate of like a bunch of different neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Um, and I lived in the, the very first one that you would drive into, uh, on the, I guess, east side. And then they lived on almost the last one that you would drive into, like on the, on the west or whatever you want to call it. And so I'm, I'm walking home and, you know, I'm just uh, listening to music on my, uh, my iPod touch, you know, this uh, kind of dates me, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm listening to music, you know, just walking my way back home. And then eventually uh, about, about a half a mile from where my house is, there's this corridor of fir trees. It's like this long corridor. It's like fir trees on the left, fir trees on the right. And um, I'm, you know, I'm just walking. And then about 30 feet in front of me, um, it steps out from my right side from the fir trees. Like it doesn't come out of the fir trees like smoke. It just steps out and it's, except in the middle of the road and just stands there. Um, and at this point I'm like, you know what? This is the time. This is it. I have nowhere to go. I'm far enough away from home that I won't make it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it must've been 10, 15 seconds. It was a very short amount of time. And then it, then it just walks. It starts walking to the other side and goes into the trees again. And then at that point I said, this is my chance. And I book it home and I'm like, okay, what's going on? And then about a day or two later is the last time that I see it, but I don't see the actual full, excuse me, I don't see the full entity. So it's, it's about lunchtime and my mom is like, Hey, you know, food's ready. Come down. Uh, and I live on the, on the second floor of my house. Um, and I'm coming out of my door and as I'm about halfway through the uh, through the doorway, from the corner of my eye, I see smoke billowing into my room, and it just turns into this. Uh, I would say maybe four, three to four inch diameter ball, and it, it. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but when I saw this thing, I was filled with dread each time. Like it was telling me, "You need to be afraid of me." Right. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. And and like, it didn't say anything, but that's the feeling I got from it. Like you could feel it. It was coming from it as if you were getting like punched in the face. It was like a a very thick feeling, if if Mm -hmm. that makes any sense. But I felt the same thing when this ball, because it came from the corner of my room and it traveled about, I had a pretty decently sized room. It was probably about eight feet. And then it was in front of me and just floating there. And that's when the fear hit its highest peak. Like I felt like it was telling me this is the moment. This is your final moment. And then the craziest thing happens, man, like even crazier than this, than the ball just coming into my room from my right side. I see these two like bright, bright mercury looking uh, orbs fly into my room. One flies on top of this, Black orb, the other one flies on the bottom. Camera flash, they're gone. Like all three orbs. And I, you know, I yell, you know, I was, I was like, you know, I yell a profanity. And then my mom was like, hey, you know, because she, did, she didn't like me, you know, cussing. And then maybe five, ten seconds later, I hear her say the same thing because she sees three mercury orbs melt through the window and then flash and disappear. And then th- when, when the flash occurred for me, it went from a moment of you're going to die right now to, and I still have not felt this feeling again in my life, to the most intense 
peace I've ever felt in the moment of that flash. Um, it was just a very strange thing. And, and had my mom not seen the other thing, uh, you know, had not seen it five, 10 seconds after I did, you know, she, that's when she started believing, you know, my stories, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, it was, it went from, like I said, like, like you're going to die to almost as if like the feeling that people will tell you, like when they, like if they have a near death experience, like they'll feel that peace. And then when they come back, they're like, Oh man, I'm back to life. Uh, sometimes I feel like, Oh man, if I could only experience that peace again. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, what led up to that peace was not pleasant. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's the opposite end of that, basically of that spectrum. Yeah. Well, that, man, that, you weren't kidding. That's intense. All of those sightings. And it's so yeah. interesting that in a lot of your sightings, you have corroboration from somebody else near you. Like, you're not the only one seeing these things. And the first time it appeared, you had D and T with you. And then even in that last experience, your mom saw the orbs leaving through the window and saw the same flash. Yeah. Did you speak to her after? Did she feel that same peace when she saw the flash? Or did it just scare her and she was kind of out of the room? So she said that she had felt like she didn't feel like an intense piece, but she said she felt like calm. Like when it happened, mm -hmm. like she felt very like calm. Like, uh, I guess maybe because I had been in this intense dread that the calm came in and said, hold up. Like, and, and so the, 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 the difference in feeling made me feel more peaceful Mm -hmm. Whereas she was just cooking, you know, like, or had just finished cooking. So she was just said she, when she saw the flash that that's when she was like, Oh, she was like, that was a very calming moment. Right. Yeah. So it's just, you were in such a state, a heightened state of fear that that calm compared to that fear was <laughs> the most peaceful thing you had ever felt basically. I mean, it yeah. may have been more th than that with you actually, because there may have been intentions. We don't know what those other two orbs were or what they were up to, but it sounds like they were yeah. saving you. <laughs> I mean, if I were to guess, that's, that's what I, that's what I tell people. Um, mm -hmm. and my mom says the same thing. Cause I told, she asked me, she's like, did you see three orbs? And I said, yes, but you know, and then I recounted to her what happened just before. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like those two were there to save me because that was my very last time ever, uh, seeing that specific shadow creature, um, cause I knew it was the same thing cause I felt the exact same feeling. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't have to take on the same form. Basically, you know, the feeling that it exudes when it, when it comes in contact with you basically. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. I, I, I completely understand that. So have you, did you tell your mom about the other experiences with the shadow being? Yeah, I had told her, like I said, uh, she's the one that let me in the house at three in the morning the first time mm -hmm. and I told her, you know, right then and there. And then when I got back home, uh, this, you know, when it came out from the trees, I told her, Hey, you know, I saw it again. And then, um, I didn't tell her about the backyard incident only because she, uh, had just, she was not home. Uh, she was overseas for work. And then she had come back in between that when it was in the backyard and then my second one. So I just kind of, you know, let that one like, okay, I'll just let her, you know, she's not gonna believe me anyways, so I won't tell her about that one. Well, I'm sure she believes you now after seeing the orbs. Oh, yeah, de definitely. She definitely uh, it takes a lot more stock in, in when I when I say things and, and my other experiences as well, where she's like, okay, so something, and she always tells me something about you has to be special or something because it keeps happening. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree with her there. Um I actually just did a little video on W.B. Yeats, and he was a poet back in the 1800s, early 1900s, but he had a theory. He, he was into the paranormal and stuff, and he had a theory that certain people can fall into what he called waking trances, like a waking trance state where you don't even realize you're doing it. It's just you can be calm, and it's not like you're like staring off into nothing or anything. You just start picking up on other vibrations or frequencies that normally people can't pick up on. And uh, it sounds like you might be able to do that just naturally. And that might be why they're so attracted to you because then they can interact with you basically. I, I do. Um, that is something that I do take a lot of stock in as a, 
like I said, um, it, it, things keep happening. And that very first time that I've had anything happen, like I said, I something told me not to go to the door, even though I was made to, you know, rock, paper, mm-hmm. scissors, you know, cause that's, that's a binding contract when you're 11. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those days. So yeah, you have an intuition about this stuff. It sounds like yeah. I, I want to go back to this first encounter with this thing. I just want to get back into the description of it. So you see this thing come out and you said it was like 11 to 12 feet tall. Did it have human proportions or were its legs bent back in a weird way or was there anything odd about it or did it just look like a human cutout silhouette cut cut out so the torso i would uh, i would say was maybe like my torso width like a regular like somebody who's six foot tall's torso um the head you know regular but uh it, no features because it was just a, a shadow mm-hmm. um but the arms and the legs were what was long because the legs were incredibly long for it to be for it to have you know my size torso and for it to be you know 11 12 feet tall they were incredibly long legs and the arms reached its knees so the arms were even longer so yeah that's yeah that that's terrifying that that almost uh, harkens yeah, back to the, uh, the the slender man or something you know if it was a, a blackout version of the slender man i don't know if you know what that is yeah, yeah, I, I, I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah, because I, I believe the legend started in like uh, the like the very first tales of the Slenderman, or like uh, in from Germany. And I, I, I lived in Germany for a time, so that's I, I believe where I heard the first time. But yeah, I would say it had those like Slenderman pr- proportions. I would say it was just very not not human. Yeah, right. So and and. You don't. You not only see it though. You also get this sense of malevolence coming off of it, and more than that, yeah. it seems like it wants to either take you or hurt you or end you in some way. At least it wants you to to believe that. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Because what makes me think that it, there's two things that made me think that it wanted just wanted me to think that. Mm-hmm. It's one. It's the, that the third time that I saw it it just stared at me and then walked off. But then the last time it came into my house. And so that makes me think maybe that time just wasn't my time. And it it wasn't either time because, you know, I was saved by those other lights. Um, But yeah, it definitely was, it was very directed like, cause I asked my friends, uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, T in the, in the interim has, uh, has unfortunately passed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, he, you know, he's in a sleep peacefully. So, you know, at least, at least that, that went that way. But, um, I asked both of them like, Hey, did you feel anything? And they both said no. So it, it was definitely very directed at me. I, and I think it was there or me specifically, and that's why it didn't really go into the middle of the street until my friends had already booked it. Right. So it was focused on you. It knew that it can interact with you, basically, and you could you could interact yeah, with it. Possibly. Could, yeah. So it could basically speak to you through that whatever that energy that it exudes, you can pick up on it. I, I've heard before because because I experienced a similar shadow being that did the same thing where it was malevolent and just exuded that fear and that it almost felt like it was feeding off of my fear. And I've heard a lot of people say that these things are um, a type of parasite almost that they can't really do something to you in in any meaningful way if you stand up to them, but they can torture you if you're afraid of them. And they can actually like force you to be afraid in a way. They, they, They force feed you that that awful feeling that you get that then makes you create that fear out of it. So I, I can kind of see how that how that would work. I've never tested that theory out. I don't want to test that theory out. So because I don't want you to <laughs> I don't want to tell you to just walk up to it next if you see it again, but yeah. uh and something bad happened. So I, I, I don't know what this thing is. I'm just speculating here, but it does seem like they they are interested in feeding off your fear in a way or feeding off the energy that you put off whenever they're, they're able to scare you or frighten you. Yeah. That, that's kind of what I, I get from, from especially this specific, uh, you know, entity that I had my encounters with. Um, 
I do feel that at times where it's maybe it couldn't have done anything specifically to me, but it was just kind of feeding, you know, like, like mm-hmm. you said, feeding off the, the energy that was coming from, from me at the time. Yeah. I have a feeling that that's what these things are. So, so do you think that after that last encounter with the balls of light that chased it away, do you think that kind of fi- finalized it? You don't expect to see this thing again in your future? I believe so. Um, just because, you know, it's been, it's been a while now. Um, and it was, like I said, within that four to five month period, you know, I saw it four times and I haven't seen it since. And like I said, when my mom saw it, it was three uh, balls of like mercury uh, light that went through the window. So I'm thinking maybe the other two came in and maybe purified it or something and, and then took it with them. So I, I, I do believe that this specific entity is no longer going to be an issue, you know, hopefully. Right. I mean, it, that's what it sounds like. And, and those balls, you describe it as mercury light. Um, did they seem solid or was it like a light source? Did they, I mean, they, I know they went through the walls and stuff like that, but yeah. was it like a glowing almost tennis ball, reflective tennis ball, or was it something more like a light? Oh, it, the reason I, I call it mercury is because you could see it move as if it was a liquid. Okay. Like it looked like a liquid ball of mercury that when it came through, stopped, and it was a, a few seconds, but you could see that these two were, they were very solid and they emitted some light, but not a ton. It was only when they, uh, like, you know, flashed that it was as if somebody had, you know, taken a, a camera flash right in front of my eyes. Mm-hmm. And what would you say these things were? Do, do you think they're angels? In your mind, what are those balls of mercury? So that's what my mom uh, has said. Um, she believes that uh, maybe the black one was, a, you know, a, a demon or, or some kind of fallen angel, mm-hmm. and the other two were there to, you know, reclaim it or, or to, um, you know, purify it or some kind of thing. Uh, so that's what I kind of think about it because I'm not a highly like I wouldn't say I'm highly spiritual or highly religious but um, that's really the only thing that makes sense to me even in having tried to look for other people with experiences that are similar because I haven't I haven't been able to find any accounts online of things that you know I found shadow persons and stuff like that but nothing with these balls of mercury that came in and you know basically saved me so Nothing right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, I think this is my uh, first time hearing something like this as well. So it's a unique experience. Um, and it sounds, I, I, the, I know the first part was terrifying, but it sounds at least after that kind of pleasant. And do you find any peace knowing that there is a, another side to these things? Uh, I mean, I know that you've experienced a lot of the darker entities, but at least now you know that there is some light out there. Yeah. So I do. Um, I do find some solace in that, in the fact that uh, there is not just, you know, malevolent forces, you know, there's something else out there that's at least looking out for us. If, you know, I doubt it's just me, you know, like there are other people that have experiences, but, you know, at least knowing that there's something good out there, you know, quote unquote good does help. Right. I mean, it it helps me knowing that too, because <laughs> I've experienced some of the, the darker sides, but I've also had some other encounters that I haven't spoken about that were on the more, uh, I guess you could say angelic side of things. So not, not physical encounters like you, but uh, just things that have happened yeah. in my life that lets me know that there is a benevolent side to all of this as well. And it, I, I'm kind of with you there. It's, we're kind of just left speculating about what's going on. I know that the Bible talks a lot about spiritual warfare and stuff like that. So who knows, there might be a battle happening um, all around us that yeah. we don't know about. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, exactly. It could be. But just a few more things before we move into your, on to your next experience. This thing that it, it disappears in smoke going up into the sky. Do you have any kind of I don't know. Do, is there any kind of meaning that you can attribute to that? Why would it go back up into the sky? Because because you first had this, 
you first had that experience with an alien-like being, and now you have a tall shadow being that always returns back up into the sky, which I, I don't know if I'm just trying to connect those two together. There may not be anything there, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, so that's, um, I, I don't know what to think about it going up, you know, into the sky. Um, I don't know if maybe it's just how you know, it looks or maybe it just, you know, it it ceases to be, you know, quote unquote corporeal and then the wind just takes it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it, it just looked like it was going up into the sky, like it, it, almost as a vacuum. So that's why I, I'm kind of hesitant to say the wind took it because the wind just doesn't work like that unless there's a tornado. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's been something that I, I can't wrap my brain around. And you, you, like you just brought up the the fact of whether it was corporeal or not. When it like so so when it walked out of the fir trees, for instance, did it move the trees around at all, or uh, did I mean did you get a sense that it was a solid being there, or do you think it was more like spiritual in a way? So when it stepped out from the fir trees, there's enough space between each tree that it wouldn't have hit it. But gotcha. the reason I I say corporeal is because. When I first saw it, the first thing I know, uh, you know, the bushes were shaking. And then the next thing I know, a couple of minutes later, you know, it's pulling and holding on to the gutter of the house across the street. Okay. So that's why I I know that because you could hear the gutter go, you could hear it as it's like pulling on it. And then that's when it kind of gets up and starts, you know, walking once, you know, my friends run to either side. Okay. So yeah, it is interacting with the physical environment then. So yeah, that, that almost adds a whole nother element of, you know, fear to this thing uh, it, that kind of ups it in my mind that it actually could maybe physically grab you if it wanted to. Yeah. So it seems a little odd in that it seems to be a little bit here and there. So a little bit spiritual, a little bit physical in a way. Um, obviously it can return, yeah. kind of walk in between those states, but yeah, that's, that's terrifying that it was actually moving stuff around and interacting with the phys- physical environment. I'm glad, I'm glad you got out of there. And, and that, that description yeah. that you gave of running down the street, I can't even imagine that with that thing being right behind you. You said it was a, a couple of feet away while you were running. Yeah. Like, uh, cause it was halfway into the, the street before I started walking and I basically, at the the closest it got to me, besides you know when it was in my face uh, the last time, mm-hmm. was within four or five feet because I had to, you know, get into the road to run off. Wow! And yeah. I, I was going to ask you this earlier when you, it walked out of the fir trees and walked it back into the other side. Did you have to pass where it had just now walked through? Yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there was no goodness. other way to get to get to where I needed to go. Wow. Well, you are braver than I. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what I would have done in that situation. But I'm glad that you came out of it so... Uh, I mean, you've done well. You've managed to, like we were talking about before, you've processed everything well, it seems. I know you've done a lot of research and stuff too, looking into it. But yeah. I, I, I just wasn't... I, like I said before, we hadn't really discussed your experiences a whole lot. So I wasn't prepared for any of this. So this is just all kind of blowing my mind right now. <laughs> but yeah, I cannot yeah, imagine Yeah, it definitely that. was mind blowing. Yeah, I, I can't imagine having to deal with that. And of course, you were a little bit older at this time, 18 to 19, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, correct. So, so you weren't a kid. But, and was this the last kind of paranormal thing that happened to you? Or was there more after this? So uh, th- yeah, that'll lead us into... Um, my next experience, um, cause I had a, another long, br- this break was actually between the last time I saw this shadow thing. And when I had this, uh, what I can only, you know, describe as, as my abductions, um, it was, I was 25 and 27 at, at the time. So it happened, uh, two years apart. Uh, okay. but nothing else happened other than, um, I think before that I had seen a, a couple of uh, UFOs, but you know, you know, those could be, you know, explained away as, you know, just aircraft I misidentified or something. So it's, you know, just kind of those kind of things. But um, after that, it was 
you know, I was 18, 19, so maybe six, six, seven years later at age 25, um, which I guess I'll, I'll, I'll lead us into the, that story if, if I can do that now. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Let's go right into it. Actually, before we do, you know, there is a yeah. correlation between alien abductions and seeing shadow people. Have you heard of that? I have heard of that. Yeah. So that's, um, and it's kind of interesting because of the, the way that I'm going to describe the, uh, the experiences um, makes me think that it's more related than not. Um, okay, perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I will shut up. You, you can jump right in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, so basically at, at this point in time, uh, I'm living in the state of Massachusetts uh, and I'm around 25 years old, um, 24, 25, something like that. Uh, and the preceding night, I was on FaceTime with my, uh, with my then girlfriend and right before I'm about to hang up with her, uh, for the night, it's as if somebody took a trombone and blew it in my ear. And then I, you know, I freak out and I ask my, my, you know, my then girlfriend, I'm like, Hey, did did you hear that? She says, no, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I don't don't know. I don't know. Uh, Let's just leave it there. And, you know, good night. And so, you know, I hang up. Um, and I, I remember hanging up. And then I woke up uh, in my room, um, floating above my bed. And I only know this because uh, I'll, I guess I'll get to that in a, in a, in a minute here. But um, my room is full of fog but it's as if there's a floodlight in my room and on the right side of my bed and the left side of my bed, there are three, um, solid as, as, as solid as can be like gray alien looking forms, but I can't see any features because of their, the lights coming from all directions and they're, and they're basically silhouettes, but there's no shadow element to it. So they don't look like the shadow creatures, but I can only see Mm -hmm. the silhouette. And then at the foot of my bed is uh, another one, but this one is much taller. The other ones, I don't know, maybe my height, um, maybe around six feet. Uh, This other one is maybe eight, nine feet tall, but it didn't have the classic gray alien shape head. I uh, couldn't make out any features of the faces on any of these things, but it had a very long, like, it was as if it had like that, you know, that pointed chin looking thing, like mm-hmm. like from the silhouette, but its head was just very tall. Like I would say maybe like two, two and a half feet from where, I would imagine the eyes were and um, cause I, and this all happens within like 30 seconds. Cause I wake up and I'm like, like I wake up cause I was hot. I was very, very hot. Like from the end, from the core, not like, like my skin didn't feel hot. Like, or I was sweating or anything just from the, I, I wake up from that. I look left and right. And then I see in front of me and then all of a sudden, the light just turns off and you can see all the fog like suck out of my room as well as all seven figures. And then I just fall onto my bed and I broke the, uh, the slats, the wooden slats. So I had to go buy some, some, (laughs) some new wooden slats. That's how I knew I was in the air. Um, and the only thing I could think of is because there is that element of missing time as well, because I hung up with my, then girlfriend and then i woke up because i don't remember going to the bed um i just i can only attribute to it to uh, some kind of abduction or something because like i said i hung up and then i woke up to this thing these things and then they disappear and i fall onto my bed um so yeah and then uh like two years later and uh at this point, I was in South Korea uh, for work. Uh, like I, we talked about, it, it's these things that followed me all over. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And at this point I have like, I just have a mattress on the floor, so I have nothing to break, but I still believe I was probably still floating, but the same thing happens again, but I don't, it's not preceded by that uh, trombone horn, but this time I'm able to watch a little longer and you, I can see them like looking at each other as if they were maybe conversing, but I couldn't hear anything. Um, and then I noticed the, the big one in the middle, I could just feel it staring at me and I, with the snap of a finger, they disappeared the same exact way. And I fell back onto my bed. Um, but obviously I didn't break any slats or anything like that. Um, and then I guess those are the, those are my experiences so far. And, you know, knock on wood uh, that those will be my experiences. <laughs> right. Right. I completely agree with you here. It sounds like, I don't know what else you could call this besides an abduction experience. And I was going to ask you when you described floating above the bed, if you felt like it was your astral or spirit form, but then you described falling back on the bed and breaking the slats in your bed, which, uh, I don't think that was your astral form if you're falling back <laughs> that hard, but that, that is that, I mean, you've experienced so many different things like I was saying at the start of the show you've had encounters with cryptids with the paranormal the shadow person and now this is very clearly an alien abduction scenario and uh, you said this was the last thing that happened to you these two experiences yeah yeah I haven't had any any kind of anything since no I haven't seen any orbs I haven't seen any mm -hmm. UFOs I haven't had any weird feelings um yeah the last time was I was 27 years old. Um, it was shortly after my birthday, actually. Um, so I had just turned 27 the, the last time. So it's, it's been quite a while. I mean, I'm in, I'm in my early 30s now. So Right. So, so that's interesting. That almost, because you hear in a lot of abduction cases where they say they're almost, the aliens are keeping tabs on different individuals. So it's interesting that you had just had a birthday and then they come back for another visit, like a checkup, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what I think. <laughs> I mean, it, it it, otherwise, it, I mean, that's just kind of a strange coincidence otherwise for them to return right after your birthday. And do, you don't have any kind of intuition that this has happened your whole life? Like this is a, this was a new experience to you? You don't remember anything as a child waking up and seeing anything like this? Um, no, no, I don't have any recollection of any other times. I can't say that it hasn't happened. Um, right. But I don't have any other recollection. I, I just remember those two times waking up uh, I guess towards the tail end of the experience, maybe they were returning me. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's where I was going to go with it. It sounds like they kind of had done what they were going to do and they were in the process of returning you and you kind of came to a little bit early, maybe when you came to, did you have any sense of, was there any emotional reaction that you had to this? Were you afraid or were you just kind of intrigued by the whole thing? Uh, I was I was very very scared uh, both okay. times uh, the first time more so than the second time just because I'm like okay this has happened before mm -hmm. and you know I'm safe you know I'm still good so the second time I was still scared but um, nothing since but ever since the second one uh, I will say that I do not sleep without a sleep mask because. If it happens, I just don't want to see it. Right. You don't want to look around. And and yeah. when you're floating, do you feel are, are you like paralyzed while you're floating up there, just able to move your eyes? Yeah, just my eyes. Okay. So you're completely paralyzed floating above your bed, but you can still move your eyes around. That I mean, that's actually yeah. that's a, a common case with 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 these kind of experiences. Um, people feel like they're floating above their head, they are completely paralyzed, but they're able to look around the room. And it's interesting, the, the, the way that you described that, the fog and the floodlight filling the room. And then you said the three gray aliens that were standing around you, they, how tall were they? Because I know you said there was one that was eight to nine feet tall. I don't remember if you mentioned how oh. tall the other ones were. So it was actually three on either side. So there were six in oh. total. And then the, seven, the seventh was the big, I would, have met, I would assume, the leader. Um, but they were... I would say probably my height. They didn't look very tall and imposing. And like I said, this one I, I would assume was maybe eight to nine feet tall, the one in the middle. Um, wow. 
because I know that my, my ceiling height was, tw- I had a, like a, a, you know, quote unquote luxury apartment and the ceiling height was, you know, I had 11 foot ceilings and then I could see the, the edges of the ceiling through the light. And, uh, that's how I kind of could judge You know, there's about two feet between the head of this tall one and the, you know, uh, the end of the head and, and the ceiling. So that's why I say like eight or nine feet. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's huge. And that's also common with these kind of experiences. A lot of times people will describe praying mantis looking aliens where you have the grays, um, the smaller ones, sometimes they're about normal human height and then there'll be a taller one there. And a lot of people describe them as looking like praying mantises or grasshoppers. Did you get a sense for, was it wearing anything? Was there a cloak or anything that I had on? Or was it just like a humanoid form with, I know you said it had a big elongated head, right? Yeah, so the the one in the middle had some kind of cl- uh, clothing on because you could see that it had a, a collar. Whereas the other six didn't look like they had anything on at all. Uh, if they did, it was a very warm fitting because the the silhouette was very crisp with the back light. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could see it had like a a collar, um, like a flared collar, a little bit, not very tall, uh, but it had some kind of something on, or I don't know if that was just part of its body, but it looked like it had a collar. Right, right, and and you didn't see any eyes or anything. You couldn't make out their facial features at all. No, no, it was just like very harsh backlight and then kind of like you would see in one of those like noir movies where they're just backlighting yeah, that, something and all you see is the sh- yeah. That's exactly what I'm picturing right now. And th- that's that's a terrifying thing to wake up to by the way. And <clears throat> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something as formidable as the the 9 foot tall being that you said and something about that head, the way you described it just I don't know. That's just that's like nightmare fuel right there. Extra <laughs> <Absolutely>. tall head. <laughs> I mean, it's just yep. something that takes it a little a step away from humanity. You know what I mean? It, it makes it feel even more alien than had it oh, even yeah. just been a bulbous head. You know, something about the elongated yeah. head just seems more alien than even what we're used to. Absolutely. Well, that that is that's terrifying, and I'm glad that these things seem to have slowed down for you. Have you ever? This is kind of me poking, but. Have you ever thought about being regressed? I've, I've thought about it. Um, and there, there are days where I'm like, yeah, I totally want to do it. But then there are days where mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I just don't want to know. Um, right. <laughs> so I, I flip flop in between and then, it, you know, it's not, it's not like cheap to find somebody that's good at that. Cause you know, there are some people who are just, you know, out there trying to, you know, take your money. And you're not going to be able to do anything. You have to find somebody reputable and they're not, you know, it's not free and it's not cheap. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and you don't want to get somebody that's going to lead you into some false memories or something like that. You do want yeah, to have somebody exactly. that, like you said, is reputable and is trustworthy. But a lot of times, like you pointed out, they're not cheap. So I, I'm yeah. kind of with you on that. I have my days where I think I want to get regressed. And then most of the time I'm like, no way, no way. It seems like with these <laughs> things, <laughs> they erase your memory for a reason. And if there's anything about them that's benevolent, I just want to assume that they have, you know, the best intentions for doing that. I, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, at least we're able to, if, if this is what's happening and like, say you are, abdu- you are being abducted, you're living still a pretty normal life, right? I mean, you're a family man, you're, you're, you're doing good. Yeah. So in my mind, it's, it's not such a bad thing to have those memories taken away, right? I mean, how do you yeah, feel about definitely. that? <laughs> I, I feel the same way. I'm able to live for the most part a normal life other than, you know, I've had these, these intense experiences, but for the most part, you know, I'm able to do my job. I'm not, uh, cause I know some people experience these things and then they, they can't even function anymore. Um, mm-hmm. Like they can't do their job. They're just like always on edge. And I will say the days like the first couple of days after each experience was kind of like that, where I'm like, like, I even called out after the first, uh, the abduction experience that I woke up on. Cause I was supposed to work that night and I called out of work. I was like, Hey, like I can't come in. I'm not feeling good. Um, and this job was really good about if you say that you're sick there, you know, the boss is just like, cool, hang up. And then you're good to go for the, for that night. Um, 
So yeah, I called out because I was just like not prepared. And especially where I worked, I had to drive uh, through three miles of just like thick, thick forest. Oh, and wow. so I, I'm, I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm just yeah. not doing that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm with you there. I would not be mentally prepared to do that after an experience like that. It, uh, did you, did you happen? Did you feel different? Like physically, did you find any marks on you or were you feeling sick? I mean, I understand that you called out just because, I mean, the emotional response to something like that yeah. happening to you, but did you have any kind of physical side effects from it? Uh, so other than I felt both times, uh, I should say, I felt very like not fever or not like sick hot, but I just felt very hot from the inside like very hot. Interesting. Like for the next 20 to 30 minutes uh, after. Hmm, that, that is interesting. It, and I wonder if it has something to do with being in that weird light that they have, you know, that you find yourself uh, in when you wake up in one of those experiences. If maybe that has something like physically does something to your body. Because it sounds yeah, almost like an otherworldly kind of light. radiation or something. Right, yeah, yeah. You, the way you describe it, it doesn't sound like your normal, typical light. I mean, you describe it with fog being in there, which it, it makes me feel like there's something more to it. You know, there's some stuff that it's putting off in the room that, that may have you have that physical side effect of feeling very hot on the inside. And I want to ask you before we go, do you think, I know you described it, this being, this nine foot tall being as um, had that strange head and everything. It couldn't have been the being that you saw from your childhood, right? Standing up on two legs. Did it look differently to you in your mind? The silhouette yeah. of the alien versus the Yeah, it had the a very, chupacabra? very different silhouette. Like I, like I said, the, yeah, the, the head on this thing was like very long. Um, and and the, the chupacabra had like... The hair. It almost had the same head and stuff. And aside from, the, yeah, the hair, but the, the head shape was the same as the other sticks that were in the room. But yeah, I had that thick hair like coming up to to a point basically. Uh, so I, I don't think they're related. Other than I do think that they're both extraterrestrial. Right. Yeah. Something about the chupacabra having that head shape is just kind of throwing me off. Like I'm trying to connect the <laughs> the dots here between that and now your later experiences. But um, like you said, there's probably no connection other than they are both alien in a way, extraterrestrial. Yeah. So, well, you've had an interesting life to say the least. And I'm glad that you're doing so yeah. well, <laughs> that you're handling it so well. And thank you so much for going, coming on the show. Uh, it really does help a lot of people out there that may not feel prepared to share their stories and are kind of living with these kind of same experiences as you or similar experiences, but are internalizing those experiences. It helps to have somebody else kind of step out and you know, say like, hey, you're not the only one. I'm experiencing these things too. And I think that those these kind of experiences are more common than what many people believe. I think it's just a matter of a lot of people just don't want to come forward with it. And, and you know, it took me years, like <laughs> in my 30s before I came forward with it and shared it with anybody. So it's understandable, but I, I do appreciate you coming on the show and being so honest about your experiences and I'm glad that you're doing better now. And if you do have any other experiences that you would like to share in the future, let me know and we'll have you right back on. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, like, if you have any other callers, any, uh, any other guests in the future that maybe have similar experiences, um, I would definitely like to uh, have you connect us and see if we can kind of, uh, I can talk to somebody who's had similar experiences. Yeah, absolutely. I can absolutely do that. So yeah, if anybody out there has had an experience like this, just email me at firelightvibes at gmail.com and I will get you connected back with Jim so you can share your experiences with any, each other and compare points basically. But yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, I really appreciate it. Right, thank you. And thank all of you for listening to the show. And if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving us a five-star review and maybe even a positive written review. It really helps increase the reach of the podcast. Now, if you don't know what to write in the written review, just leave me a comment telling me what topic you would like me to cover in the future or maybe what your favorite cryptid is, something like that. Also, for a more in-depth exploration of lesser-known paranormal cases, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Firelight Vibes. And if you have a topic you'd like me to cover on the YouTube channel, or if you're an experiencer and you'd like to be on the podcast, 
Just send me an email at firelightvibes at gmail.com. I read all of my emails and I promise I'll get back to you. All right, everybody, I think that about does it. Thanks again for joining me and have a great day.